Back in 2008, Bitcoin white paper was released in the public internet. This was a big milestone in the cryptocurrency history. However, the digital currency history did not start in 2008. In reality, it was way back in the 80s. In 80s, there were a bunch of people. They are called、uh, cypherpunks, and people in this community advocated the principle of freedom of money. They say each individual in the society should be in full control the money they own, and it should be censorship resistant. Which means the government or third parties is unable to trace or survey the financial status. This is a fantastic goal, but very hard to achieve, because we are living in the physical world. We have to use in the local currency, the banking systems, the credit cards. So more or less, our financial status is transparent to the government. At the same time, there was another thing booming up. It's called internet. So we humanities tends to create useful information, aggregate them into centralized repositories or institutions like、uh, libraries or universities. So if we want to get access to the useful information, we first need to have access to the centralized institutions. But internet came out and broke this rule. It says, "Okay, boys, what I can do now is I can convey the information from one spot to another." All across the world, free of charge and instantaneously. How cool is that? Then cypherpunks started to think. Wait a minute. Can we create a money system sitting on top of the internet and with all its great features shared, so that we can convey value from one spot to another, all across the world, free of charge and instantaneously? This sounds like a natural continuation from the internet concept. Cypherpunks did a lot of experiments and carried out a lot of projects. A big challenge to design a money system is to maintain the ledger. The ledger keeps transaction information such as Alice pays Bob, Bob pays Charlie, Charlie pays Alice. These transaction information tells who owns what and where in the system. We tend to store the ledger information in the centralized server, which unfortunately will act as a single point of failure in the system. If your project got a little bit bigger and the government got a little bit worried about you, then they will talk to you and force you to shut down the project. This has happened in the history. On the other hand, people who are in control of the server might corrupt as well. They could cash out the money, shut down the project, take the money, and run away. That has also happened in the history. So, in the summary, it wasn't a great success until Bitcoin was born in 2008. So, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency that uses cryptography technologies such as hash functions, public key, private keys, but these were existing technologies. The biggest innovation from Bitcoin is that it solved the single point of failure problem. There is no centralized server in the environment anymore. It's a fully decentralized, well-designed money system living in the internet. Now let's think about a question: Does Bitcoin really have value? Let's say local currencies are backed up by the local government, banking systems are backed up by banks. What backs up Bitcoin? Nothing. It was created out of thin air and just a bunch of binary codes sitting in the internet. It has only the social consensus. The more people believe in it, the more people trade it, exchange it, then the more value it presents. Slowly, the value of Bitcoin has increased along the time. We used to buy thousands of Bitcoin per dollar. Now it's thousands of dollars. Per Bitcoin, so it has made great social impact, but it's also hard to change now. There are people who want to tweak the algorithms, increase the efficiencies, or add new features, but they can't easily do that anymore in Bitcoins. So since 2013, people start to fork from Bitcoins. They use the same code, the same concept, and、uh, generate their own copy of coins, so-called alternative coins. 
Since then, there were thousands of altcoin projects popping up. One of the most successful projects is called Ethereum. Bitcoin is about to convey the value from one address to another, but there is a story behind. There is a reason to transfer the value. Was it the law? Was it the contract? Was it the rental agreement? People in Ethereum projects start to think: What about if we can create a programming language to automate this logic behind, so that when the transaction happens, then the logic happens as well? This is so-called smart contract. Today it's 2018. We have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have thousands of altcoins. What problems remain to be resolved? The first one is called scalability. It's like putting a pie on the table, and then we have all chairs around the table. The more chairs we have, the smaller piece of a pie each one of us get. That's the current situation in all the platforms. But we don't want this. We want it to be scalable automatically. The more people we have, then the more resources the systems will get. Do we have an analogy in the internet? Yes, we do. The BitTorrent peer-to-peer -peer downloading protocol in the internet has the scalable feature. The more people we have for the downloading file, the faster downloading speed we get. The second problem is called、uh, interoperabilities. We have bitcoins, we have Ethereum's, and all the other platforms. They are sitting in silos. They don't know the existence of others. So we want to build a bridge in between, so that the value can flow smoothly from one platform to another. This idea is very similar to the Internet of Things, the IoT concept. The third problem is called the sustainability. People in the communities supporting the platforms are decentralized. This is very different structure than the centralized companies like Facebook or Google that has a hierarchy. There is no company paying everybody to get the job done. There is no CEO sitting on the top to define the strategies, the visions, to control the company. It's a fully decentralized community. So how do we make sure people in the communities all get along? Because we don't easily get along. We have different background, different education, different age, different languages. So it's not an easy task. Things have happened in the history. People had disputes, and the community diverged, such as Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Today, cryptocurrency space is still at its early days. It's still a small baby. There are a lot of problems to be solved. A lot of attentions needed from people. We need programmers. We need investors. We need UX UI designers. We need data analysts to help us to you know visualize the data. We need more adaptations to the crowd to the societies. At last, in my opinion. Join cryptocurrency space is gonna be an awesome journey and a heck of a lot of fun. Looking forward.